Hi, PerspectiveWeather.com meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Monday, August 31st, the last day of the month of August. And indeed, the tropical scene in the Atlantic Basin remains quite active, although nothing really imminent in terms of a threat for the U.S. And we'll talk about uh, the tropics over the next couple of minutes. Very pleasant morning here in the Mid-Atlantic region. There are uh, will be plenty of clouds, however, over the next couple of days with uh, some uh, shower activity as well, moving into the D.C. metro region shortly and then probably into Philadelphia later on in the day, probably not until tonight in the New York City metro region, but continuation of some comfortable temperatures for the next couple of days in the mid-Atlantic region. It does turn warmer at midweek. However, we might be setting up for a pleasant Labor Day weekend, at least Saturday and Sunday at this point, look quite nice in the uh, D.C., Philly, New York City, uh, Mid-Atlantic region, throughout the Northeast and uh, Great Lakes as well, as uh, it looks like they'll have, uh, we'll have another cold frontal passage late in the week and Canadian high pressure to take over for Saturday and Sunday. Let's start off by taking a look at the uh, tropical scene right now. We've talked about the typical peak uh, in the tropical activity for the Atlantic Basin is, is around the middle part of September. And, of course, this has been a very active year in the Atlantic Ocean, but not, uh, not normal activity in the Pacific Ocean. We'll talk about that also over the next couple of minutes. First of all, we have not three, but four different waves to monitor here in the Atlantic Basin as we end the month of August. First of all, there is a system very likely to form into a tropical storm over the next uh, day or so, but it's already off the coast and only has the ability to move away farther off the coast as it looks like it'll push to the north and east. So that may become another tropical storm. We have another wave here in the Caribbean Sea and it looks like that too has a chance to develop into a tropical storm as it continues on a west-northwest pass path. It looks like it uh, end up going into the Yucatan Peninsula region of Mexico. Whether it survives that or not, a little too early to say. If it survives that pass over here into this part of Mexico, it could emerge into the southwestern Gulf. Then over the eastern Atlantic, a couple different waves here. One uh, already in the central Atlantic, moving slowly to the west, and yet a fourth tropical wave now moving uh, to the west coast of Africa, and that too will push westward into the tropical part of the Atlantic. So we'll monitor all of these over the next several days. Certainly nothing imminent in terms of impact in the U.S. as this system right here moves away, and, and so then we'll have to uh, closely keep our eyes on this particular system as it heads towards the Yucatan Peninsula region of Mexico. Well, as we end the month of August, how are we doing on a global basis in terms of tropical activity? As most of you know, and as we've discussed here at length, the Atlantic Basin has been well above normal with uh, certainly many, many more numerous storms than is normal for this time of the year. And one of the ways we monitor tropical activity is with uh, a value called the Accumulated Cyclone Energy, ACE, a short a uh, way to refer to it is just the ACE index, and it, it takes into account not only the intensity or magnitude of a tropical system, but also its longevity. The longest lasting tropical cyclone at the highest intensity level will add the most amount to the accumulated cyclone energy, and it's really a good way, perhaps the best way, to monitor tropical activity. And what we have here uh, comes from the Colorado State University, and here is the accumulated cyclone energy. What uh, are the parentheses represent the climatological means in the 1981-2010 time period? And here we have the North Atlantic right here showing up on the very first line here. 42.1 is the ACE right up to date, right to the end of the month of August, and that compares to the climatological. 30.5. So again, above normal conditions so far in the Atlantic Basin, but quite a different story out in the Pacific Ocean. Of course, the Pacific Ocean uh, in, uh, in one way is uh, much more important 
than any other ocean because of its size. It, it, it is the largest ocean by size uh, by far in the world. And take a look at this in the Northeast Pacific and Northwest Pacific below normal. And in, in the Northwest Pacific way below normal for this time of the year. So the overall number in the Northern Hemisphere is considerably below normal. Uh, here we have 140.9 for the accumulated cyclone en energy around the Northern Hemisphere up to date and that's compared to the normal of 241.2 and that is again largely because of the uh, very very far below normal readings coming out of the Pacific Ocean especially the western half of the Pacific Ocean what we refer to here as the Northwest Pacific so even though the Atlantic has been well above normal overall in the northern hemisphere it's been a below normal season in terms of tropical activity well tomorrow begins the month of September I thought we'd take a peek look here at the temperature pattern going forward over the next couple of weeks we definitely have some cold air outbreaks for this time of the year relatively cold uh, for this time of the year coming into the central part of the nation over the next few weeks and uh, in multiple occasions that cooler than normal air mass will spill over into the eastern states, perhaps not quite as uh, uh, significantly colder than normal as what they'll experience in the middle of the nation, but we do have some uh, cool air outbreaks coming over the next couple of weeks. First of all, let's take a look right now as we begin the week, last day of the month of August, we do have a cooler than normal air mass in the mid-Atlantic region, in the northeast U.S. Again, temperatures yesterday a little bit below normal for this time of the year. Places like D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, and that will hold true for today and even into tomorrow as we'll experience lots of clouds in the I-95 corridor region. Look at this, quite a chilly air mass for this time of the year out over the middle part of the nation. Now let's go forward through uh, the next couple of weeks and watch what happens. We, uh, we uh, continue to have... Uh, some cooler than normal air masses develop over Canada. This is now the middle of this week, Wednesday, and that dives into the uh, into the central U.S. And again, this is the area where they'll experience uh, numerous colder than normal <coughs> outbreaks over the next few weeks. By the end of this week, in the eastern states, will be above normal. But again, we may be setting up for a very nice Saturday and Sunday as this particular refreshing air mass slides into the eastern states again it's looking like Saturday in DC Philly New York City may be a repeat of yesterday with comfortable temperatures and humidity levels that's lava to last through Sunday as well a little too early to say about Labor Day but then look, look what happens next week on the heels of that air mass another colder than normal outbreak headed for the central US this is by the early part of next week. This is the Labor Day itself, the Labor Day Monday forecast. Nearly normal at this time in the eastern U.S., but much, much below normal, headed right for the central part of the nation. It looks like that particular air mass may have a little trouble spilling over into the eastern U.S. and will be more or less nearly normal in the I-95 corridor region and holding above normal in terms of temperatures over New England and southeastern Canada. But uh, quite a variable pattern here, above normal conditions here, below normal right in the heartland of the U.S. and above normal out in the western U.S. So while the central U.S. has multiple colder than normal air outbreaks uh, over the next couple of weeks, the western states will be uh, experiencing quite a bit of hotter than normal air for this time of the year. Let's go out a little bit farther and here we go, this continuation of this pattern here with warmer than normal up across southeastern Canada, below normal in the central U.S., and above normal in the western states. These maps from the ensemble run of the 6Z GFS last night. So uh, definitely some cooler air outbreaks coming into at least the central U.S. over the next few weeks. Well, let's take a look at the surface forecast maps from the operational run of the GFS at 6Z. High pressure Maintaining control right now over the mid-Atlantic region, however, there's a batch of showers and embedded thunderstorms out across West Virginia and western part of Virginia. And clouds have already thickened up in D.C. and are thickening up in Philadelphia right now, and it will become a mostly cloudy day. That will help to keep temperatures 
at comfortable levels once again, and there certainly can be some shower activity moving into the D.C. metro region uh, really any time from now into the uh, middle part of the day, and those showers uh, will continue off and on in D.C., right through the rest of the afternoon into the nighttime hours, likely to reach Philadelphia later on in the afternoon, and maybe some shower activity in New York City overnight tonight, but doesn't look like a heavy rain event. Still kind of protected somewhat by that high pressure system, but again, lots of clouds over the next couple of days in the I-95 corridor region. And then high pressure moves off the coast, and here we go by Wednesday morning. Notice the flow of air that turns more to a southwesterly direction as high pressure at the surface pushes off the New England coastline. End result, it turns warmer or humid, more summer-like again by the middle and latter part of the week with temperatures well, well up in the 80s for the most part. And that will come also with the chance of afternoon and evening showers and thunderstorms. But then as we get towards the end of the week, here we are now by Friday morning, high pressure drive, uh, driving south and east from central Canada and a nice air mass. We saw that a moment ago on the 850 millibar temperature anomaly uh, maps here uh, by the, this upcoming week and a, a nice chilly air mass for this time of the year into the Great Lakes region and some of that air, some of that refreshing air will follow this frontal passage late Friday and move right into the I-95 corridor region or the Mid-Atlantic region for Saturday and Sunday. Again at this vantage point looks like a nice weekend Saturday and Sunday for the Great Lakes and Mid-Atlantic region of the Northeast U.S. with Canadian High dropping down into the Ohio Valley and dominating the scene for Saturday and Sunday. So that's something to look forward to. That's it for now. For PerspectiveWeather.com, I'm meteorologist Paul Dorian.